But can you bring up my graph? It's time. We tease the people enough, JB. Can we show them the true and the accurate record from the AFC and the NFC this season? Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. AFC North, you see I got the Bengals at the top of that division, 12 and 5, with Lamar Jackson's Ravens closely behind, <laughs> 11 and 6. The Browns are going to be good this year at 10 and 7. And the Steelers, Mike Tomlin will maintain his record, his streak of winning seasons or non-losing seasons. That the Steelers will be 9 and 8 and still be competitive. We're going to move down to the AFC East, as you can see. I got the Jets, 12 and 5. Me and Jimmy were both. We're high on the Jets this year. I got them winning the AFC East 12 and 5. The Bills will still be respectable at 11 and 6. The Dolphins at 10 and 7. And Bill Belichick's Patriots will be a lonely 4 and 13. I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I think it's a wrap in New England. They had their run, but it's time to blow that thing up and move on. Move across the board to the AFC West. We got Jay Herbo and the Chargers at 13 and 4. I think this is the year that Jay Herbo takes over and they will be number one in the AFC West. But I do think the Chiefs with Chris Jones will have a matching record, but the Chargers will have the tiebreaker. And that's why they'll have the, 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 the slight edge right there uh, in the AFC West. The Broncos, I got them at 9 and 8, which will actually be a little better than last year. But I just don't see them really making no serious noise. And then the Raiders with Jimmy G and those guys. I actually like Jimmy G. I think he's a winner. But I just think, man, I, it's hard for me to see anything great in Raider land. I see them being 5 and 12. And the AFC South, y'all. And, and this one, it hurts me to say. It truly hurts me to say this, but I got to keep it real. I got the Jaguars winning the AFC South with a 10 and 7 record. The Titans closely behind one game with a 9 and 8 record. The Texans with a 7 and 10 record. And my Colts. Also with a seven to ten record, I just I'm gonna be real with you. Like obviously I'm a coach fan. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be rooting for him all year long, but uh, we have a rookie at quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He and he has a lot of learning to do. We don't know what's going on with Jonathan Taylor. If he's gonna play, if he's hurt, it like his mind. I don't know where his mind is at. There's too many question marks for me to go out here and be like, you know what? The coach are gonna be twelve and five. So I gotta be real. And that's how my AFC looks, JB. Before I move on, do you? Hey, I, I, Love, it doesn't matter. See, I, I'm just glad you take heat too, like me. Like it doesn't matter what anyone picks. You're always gonna have somebody out there that's uh, crazy as hell with the and, and like dog. These are opinions. Like <laughs> shut up, God. <laughs> and give it two wins and losses. Two wins, two losses. Either way, that's how predictions work. Either one of us are Nostradamus. We're not. We don't sit here and tell you that we're being paid to bet on games either that's not what right. we do by right. the way so you can take them or don't take them you got your own opinions but guess what usually my shit ends up being right <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it. can you bring up the nfc my guy ethan man i appreciate you the nfc oh that's <laughs> Now we starting to cook. Now we oh, eat this getting it. Now oh, we eat this getting it. God yeah. damn. Yeah. It only took you three weeks. Hey, he's, he's learning. He's learning, man. Okay. And I, and that, that got me hyped. I'm, I, I just kind of rejuvenated. Start with the NFC North, man. We got the Vikings at the top, man. 11 and shit, 6. By the way, let me throw that out there. <laughs> Vikings at 11 and 6. You know, I think Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson got Jordan Addison. I think I think Madison at the running back position is better than what than what we think. I think they're still going to lead that NFC North, but the Lions is right behind them, ten and seven. The Detroit Lions will be in the playoffs this year in a wild card position. They will make it, y'all. And I saw, by the way, Detroit for the first time in Lions history, uh, this sold out their season tickets holder. They sold out first time ever. So shout out to the Lions. The Bears will be tremendously better compared to last year. But they'll, so I got them at eight and nine. I don't have them win 10 games. I got them at eight and nine. And then the Green Bay Packers, man. Any Packers fans in here? I think Eric with the wrench might be a Packers fan. I got y'all at two and 15. Y'all about to be trash, like trash bag juice. It's a wrap with Jordan Love, no Aaron Rodgers. It's over for y'all, man. Rebuild, rebuild. They're taking right now for Caleb Williams, man. That's what Green Bay is about to do. Uh, we got NFC East next. Get the Eagles at the top, 12 and 5. Uh, slightly, you know, I, I still see them being really good. I know I didn't have them in my top five contenders, 
Um, that's because the AFC is so loaded, but the Eagles will still be very good. Cowboys will be 10 and 7, a little worse than they were last year, but still competitive. Daniel Jones, uh, Giants got them being at 9 and 8. I'm not too high on them, but I respect them. And I got the Washington Commanders, or why I don't know what they're called, just Washington at 4 and 13. I'm just not, I, I went through their schedule, JB. And I, I was really trying to find wins, and I just wasn't seeing more than four wins realistically. So, uh, the, Saints, what? the Saints is a little low for me in a bad division. They got the best defense in the division. I'm not high on the Saints either because of Derek Carr, but they don't play anybody of significance. Like the Saints have a breeze of a schedule. If we're considering any NFL team to be a breeze, I do not agree to that take. But the, I don't believe they play like any top tier quarterback at all this season. Yeah, I did. I saw a post there. I actually saw like like a post that like, was showing I like Saints, I don't think the Saints play Mahomes. Hey, my Apple. my no, it, Ethan, and I love you, Ethan, but you made a mistake because I, I was looking at that, JB. I'm like, hold on, I don't have the Saints at five and twelve. I'm looking at my list right now on my phone here. Oh, I have the oh, shit, here yeah, we go. and I I have it right. I have it right here, so I'm not lying. I can see y'all. I can see y'all screenshot. I have I have the Saints at seven and ten. I have the Bucks at five and twelve. The All right, so I'll give you that. Uh, yeah. but still so, seven and ten. What so do before, I got the Saints as? So before we post this, make sure we get that corrected, my guy. I got the Saints at seven and ten. I had them win seven games for the same reason why you just said, JB, uh, that their schedule. Uh, it's all hey, it's like you can I give you one mistake. You know, when we get the second mistake, now we gotta throw the gloves on. But I get you give you one mistake. Uh, but overall, yeah, NFC yeah, South, I'm, I'm not expecting them to be too great. NFC West, though, JB, look, I got the, I got the Niners, twelve and five. You know, I'm, I got the Niners in the Super Bowl this year, so I gotta I gotta stick to my word. I got them at twelve and five. I got your Seahawks though, at ten and seven, which is very respectable in my opinion. I got the Rams at seven and ten, and I got the Cardinals, who may be the worst team in the league, at two and fifteen. Right along, right there, them and Green Bay will be battling for Caleb Williams and Drake May, and uh, we'll see. Who will get the first and second pick between those guys? Because those are the two worst teams in the league. I, I mean, you saw me that again. I'm the guy that sticks his head out there and and is willing to risk all the hate. So I took a week of hate while you sat here and created this pretty ass schedule. So kudos to you. Um, but uh, hey, let me be honest here. Let's be real. Um, Mine has a two-game buffer. Everyone should have a two-game buffer. So Mine my do schedule too. does make sense mathematically. Yeah. If you give me the two-game buffer, shut the hell up. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Not everybody can win five games. Shut up. It goes two ways either way. So having said that, I want to be clear here on some football knowledge. Washington has a really good, decent roster. Probably the best D-line in football. They have uh, some good pieces in the secondary. And the Washington Commanders have a legitimate opportunity to be pretty good. If they have this record right here, Riverboat Ron is fired. And I don't know if this is the year they're fired. Eric Bieniemy will bring some energy. I don't know what he'll do on offense with Kobe Brissett or with uh, – I think Kobe Brissett's going to end up being the guy there. Um, not uh, – what's his name? Uh, From North Carolina? Yeah, he ain't ready. They're going to struggle early because of the quarterback uh, position. But uh, that's what I, I'm concerned about. And they're in the NFC East, which is pretty damn good. I, I don't see them being the Eagles. I don't see them being the Cowboys. They could split with the Giants, maybe. Like, I just, it's hard. You know what I mean? They're playing a tough I, division, too. I have a different take on Arizona. I have a different take on the Cardinals. Yes, they're going to be bad. But here's the thing I have them, I think, at what? Eight wins? Um, so, which it could be six wins. Right, um, right. And mine's going to be four. Yeah, yours could be four. But here's the thing. I have a different take on them. I think structure and organization will get them six wins it just mm. in itself. Because if everyone out here who's – y'all, you're the one that claims Kyler Murray's so goddamn good. So why can you give a guy two wins if he's so good under new structure, under a new environment regime, I believe – well, I'm I'm here real quick. I'm cut you off. I'm here. And Kyler Murray might not be ready at the start of the season. Okay, so I don't know about that. But here, here's the thing. I'm just telling you, 
Someone that I don't really see eye to eye with, someone that actually called me out last year on a live press conference because of my TikTok and hit me blasting his ass out on protection, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, who I did not allow in my office. Um, here's the thing. We're going to see how incompetent that man was as a head football coach, just like you're going to see how incompetent Hackett was in Denver. Mm. That thing matters. You're going to see some incompetence matter. I think Arizona's going to be much better than 2-15. and 15. I think they're going to win six to eight games. That's just what it is. I think the NFL is on an equal playing field for the first time in a long time. I think it's watered down, and we're going to see more wins by bad teams than we've seen in the past. I don't think there'll be a three-win team this year. Mm. Like everybody's telling me there is. Oh, you're, you're, you don't have nobody under five wins. No, I don't. I don't think there are going to be that many low teams that win under five games this year. There's not going to be a three-win Chicago Bear team this year. I don't see it. I'm looking at the schedules. I didn't just throw those schedules out there in this prediction. I looked at the schedules, contrary to your belief. Give me the two-game buffer. Understand this is a watered-down year. You're going to see teams battle for playoff position late in the season more than we've ever seen before. This is a really, really, really equal uh, playing field. And I'm just telling you, that is why I picked it how I picked it. 